Hi, everybody. My name is John DiPietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. And you know, most of our Camper Report shows, I have a virtual background. You have a virtual background. But today, we have real live campers, our grandchildren, two of our grandchildren. Emerson, wave. Mila, wave. No, he's on, he's on the other side. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. Emerson's on your right. Mila's on your left. Right. But when you look in the camera, it practices more often. But either way, they're heading for the pool here at the campground. We are up in Wisconsin Dells, and they're standing right in front of our Dynamax ISATA 3 brand new unit that I'm going to be talking about in my segment today with Brian Clemens from Dynamax. Okay, guys, you're done. Your days are over. Okay, Bob, how about you? He'll send, he'll send the check later. He'll send the check later. I've, I've got a great interview with Pavel Bosovic, who is the CEO of 27 North, a maker of adventure vans. And he's got an incredible story. He emigrated from the Ukraine in 1999, was had a construction background and knew about RVs, was building custom homes, five to $10 million. Decided wow. he liked the RV industry, bought a dealership, and now he owns a manufacturing company. Fascinating interview. He's done it all there. He's done it yeah. all. In a so, short period of time. Yep, we've got those stories. Plus, we have all the news of the week. And uh, where do we get that news from, Bob? From Rick Kessler at RV Business Magazine and Ben Quiggle at Campground Management Magazine. So stay with us. We've got a great show right here. Where, Bob? On the Camper Report Show. And welcome back to the Campers Report Show, everyone. This is the news segment. My name is John DePietro. His name is Bob Zagami. And Bob, this week... We learned a whole bunch of new things about Camping World. They're they're revamping the way they sell their products, but they're also making a lot of personnel changes to kind of stay in tune with um, the new industry. So talk about uh, what they're doing. Yeah, on top of their single brand specific dealerships that they announced last week, this week they announced uh, high, new hires in their field operation team expansion. Now they're going to be highly focused on service, RV technicians, customer service, what is very interesting about this press release, they have recruited people from their major competitors. It used to be that the major competitors could take Camping World people, but the people that they have hired have come from Blue Compass, and they had experience at Blue Dog RV, and they had camping, and they, had, they took a uh, marketing manager from Camping from Camping World, and they had Blue Compass and Blue Dog. Um, and also they took a, a financial person from Campers Inn. So they, they recruited some pretty high level people from their competitors. And that's, that's a significant change. But it's, I, you know, the way I read this is Marcus is very serious about changing over that field service operation correcting some of the issues that they've had in the past. Yep. And as we've seen many times, when Marcus decides to do something and he drops a, a shoe like that, like he did last week with the single brand dealerships, now he drops this. He never just drops one shoe. You can guarantee that there will be follow-up hires at from high level and from a lot of his competition. So Interesting. Kudos to them. That, that's well, two weeks in a row with major announcements. It's a big business, and uh, there's big money being waved in front of people to uh, have them join the team. That's the only thing I can. And it, it, it may it may be the forerunner of a period of time where people who have been acquired and are part of the other mega dealers, if these people look at Camping World as a career change, you can bet there'll be more. It will also do it just like when a dealership sells to Camping World. There are other dealers that want to look at it and see how it works. So yep, exactly. big story, this one. That's why exactly. we led off with that one. Big yep. story. And one of the other big stories that's coming out is that um, AAA is predicting over 50.7 million travelers will be hitting the road in a wide variety of different modes, whether it's airplanes, cars, uh, boats, uh, cruises, et cetera, et cetera. But they'll be hitting the road over 4th of July. And I, I think, um, I'm not sure, but the 4th of July is a Monday, which could make it a long weekend. Uh, uh, no, 4th of July is Tuesday. 
Tuesday. Okay, so it's yeah. even a longer weekend. It's a, it, it is going to be a long weekend. It's even right. longer weekend. But you yep. know what? It's two million more people than last year, and um, you know what? I think the COVID travel blues are behind us, and um, people are hitting the road again. Yeah, it's up four point seven percent, twenty two over twenty three, uh, nineteen to uh, nineteen to twenty three was three point seven. So it's almost five percent over last year in yep. terms, of, and that's that's auto, air, and other, and the the other is where the RV is fit. I'm sure. Yeah, but the well, thing, the, thing that ba- the thing that baffles me, and if you listen to the television, there's potential problems with air travel on July 1st. There are 5G towers that are going to be activated. Not all 5G are activated. The airplanes have to have a special box yep. in order to land in bad weather. There's a lot of it. They asked the airline industry is asked to delay it. There's a lot of airplanes that don't have it. And they think that the cancellations are going to be incredible over the weekend. The question is, what did these 4.17 million people think when they decided to go in an airplane this weekend? Yeah, well, and you know what? It's exactly true. And uh, the amount of cancellations and delays that you and I have both personally experienced over the last month and a half, long before this July 1st thing right. came up, um, is amazing. And it's no fun. It's no fun. You know what? When I was at a major national airport not too long ago, I take pictures of people waiting in line, struggling with with each other at the TSA lines and saying there's never been a better time to buy an RV. And, you know, this RV that behind me, we are driving it right now. We are on a uh, we've gone thirteen hundred miles so far from Boston to Wisconsin Dells. I will tell you this. I periodically stop at the rest areas just either to get gas or to get out and walk around. And a visit to the public restrooms is reason enough to invest in an RV. So, you know, <laughs> well, you know go, going back to the airplanes, this 5G thing is so significant. Even Pete Buttigieg is on TV saying it's going to be really bad. And yep. he doesn't know anything about airlines. So, yep. Yep. You, can, you can imagine what it's going to be like. And there was there was seven seven or eight hundred flights canceled today, just because of rain and heavy winds. Like right. my, the computer right. problems. The other night, the other night, same thing. Ah. You know, in the Midwest. So, in fact, I interestingly, I was driving through South Bend today, and I waved over to Pete. So, the other interesting aspect of people traveling. Uh, very interesting stories of people that are um, interrupting me while we while we speak here. But what it all boils <laughs> down to is you got to keep going when you do live broadcasting. You have to keep right. going. Um, if you take advantage of trends and news stories, and our friend David Meerman Scott has invented a term called newsjacking. Okay, right. when you take a news event and turn it into a positive event for your business, and this is what a campground in the great state of Maine has done. It's called Laughing Grass Campground. They have a cannabis themed campground because cannabis has been legal in Maine for three years now, but lots of other, you know, outside of uh, Massachusetts, most of the other New England and North states are not. So not only do they allow you to um, smoke grass at the campground, they encourage it and they have activities instead of, uh, Playing pin the tail on the donkey or having a uh, three. I guess they're the only whatever. campers that are in there. Imagine being an older, mature couple that doesn't yep. know what laughing uh, campground camping. What is it called? Laughing grass. Camp camp laughing grass. Yes. They want to see it, by the way. Yeah. But imagine an older couple going in there and checking in and smelling the air and finding all these kids romping around. And they said. Uh, you can just light it up anywhere and yep. pass it around. That's completely legal. And if you you can bring your own, but if you don't bring your own, they got a situation where they can sample. They can't apparently they can't sell it, yep. but you can sample other strains of weed that's provided by local dispensaries. New so you got it all. <laughs> New meaning to uh, having fun around the campfire. 
that anyway. that and making that and making memories. Yeah, exactly. That'll last forever. So it's laughing, <laughs> laughing grass campground in Harrison, Maine. That's way up there. Harrison, Maine is. Is it way up there? It's up, way up by Caribou. Yeah, way up. Okay, so yeah. maybe uh, if there's a white right wind, it everything goes to Canada. Goes uh, to Canada. Although we're here in the central part of the country and uh, went through Chicago this morning, and the worst uh, air on record in the world in the, in the country yeah. Chicago yeah. this morning yeah. um, based on those forest fires. So anyway, so interesting Newsweek, Camping World, making um, more headlines and um, more people traveling for Fourth of July. And people are going to Maine to get high and to go camping at the same time. So you, get, you can have your lobsters and your cannabis, too. Yep, exactly. So yeah. that's the story. And um, we want to tell everybody that this is the Camping Report Show. We get our news from RV Business Magazine and Rick Kessler and Woodall's Campground Magazine with Ben Quiggle. So stay with us, everybody. we got a great show lined up for you. Welcome back, everybody, to the Camper Report Show. Today, I have a special guest, Pavel Bossover from 27 North. And you probably never heard of Pavel, and you may never have heard of 27 North. So our objective today is to introduce you to a new company, some adventure bands, but I don't want to steal his thunder. Pavel, wel- welcome to the Camper Report Show. We're glad to have you. Thank you, Bob. Deeply honored to be a part of your show, and uh, I look forward to where this goes, too. Give us a little bit of back. Well, give us your background. First, and then we'll do a little bit of the background of the uh, company and your products. Yeah, I appreciate that. So I immigrated from Ukraine at a young age in the 90s. Uh, We started off uh, pretty humble beginnings. Uh, Many call us the uh, great American dream or the success story. Uh, And so growing up in poverty really pushed me to uh, always look further and beyond where most people would look. And by the time I was in uh, high school, I was heavily uh, interested in uh, the automotive industry as well as construction. And so through college, I uh, would buy and sell cars. I'd repair them, sell them, modify them, build them out, sell them again, repeat. And then by the time I finished college, I was uh, diving into construction. I built 33 houses out of college and got a really good sense of uh custom homes that you know five five to ten million dollar properties and then spec homes you know the three bedroom two bath single family cookie (laughs) cutter box homes and so i had the automotive experience i had the construction experience i'm like everybody's doing this i want to do something different and so that kind of led me to think of well how can i merge the two and that's when i uh dove into the rv industry that's that's interesting. We've got. An, I don't know if you ever saw any of our programs with the uh, Silver Moose Restorations up in Maine. Yeah, uh, Jim Roy was a custom home builder. Had an accident and decided he didn't want to climb those big ladders. <laughs> he, he went into uh, vintage RV restoration. He's probably the top Airstream renovator in the country, right up oh. there in the middle of the woods in Maine. So I, I love stories like that because you have the vision of seeing what many people did not see. Now, I I know in our early conversation, you mentioned that you do like to give back. You you have not forgotten your roots. Exactly. Critical to success. Tell us a little bit about your uh, ministry work. Yeah, so uh, one time a year, we go back to the beautiful country of Ukraine, uh, even during the time of war. Uh, We like to spend about one or two months out there. And uh, we go to places where mainstream kind of like the big NGOs don't go. So we go to the remote villages where, uh, you know, families that need a home restored or a family that doesn't have a home will acquire them a home, help them move into a new residency. And then we also uh, love orphanages. My wife and I haven't been able to have our own children. So that's something we're really passionate about. So we help a lot of orphanages there as well. That's fantastic. That's uh, very worthy of you. And I'm sure the people really appreciate it. So when you get into the RV business, 
you went right to adventure vans or did you have some other RV experience? Oh, so funny story. I started an RV dealership uh, called the RV firm out of Ozark, Missouri. And for about what was, what was it called? The RV firm. The RV firm. Okay. Yeah. And so that was a huge success because this was uh, right before the pandemic. We rode the wave of the pandemic, which was phenomenal. And so we started, uh, we were flipping RVs. We were doing trade-ins. Uh, we got a, we had a line with Grand Design. Uh, we were doing parts. We were doing service. I mean, we hit it hard from every direction. I was super ambitious. I still think I am or like to think that I am. And, <laughs> it sounds uh, we- yeah, we we got. Uh, I mean, we were servicing every manufacturer there is. Uh, we were KZ warranty certified. We were um, Thor Keystone. I mean, you name it. We were certified warranty center. Uh, we could turn units quick, so we set up a seven day operation. And so, when most RV dealers were taking Saturday off or Sunday off, we were working seven days a week, two shifts, and we could churn service units. So I ran it like a construction site, and so uh-huh. I had specialty men and like I had a specialty electrician a specialty RV plumber and we learned an immense amount of information of what to do and what not to do <laughs> that's, all, that's usually how it goes so how did you get to a point of saying I want to make adventure bands and and for the benefit of our audience you know this is still a new segment of our industry in fact there are people in our industry that would tell you adventure bands on RVs but they are and yeah. a lot of the dealers are now discovering them. Why right. adventure van RVs? Yeah, so great question. Um, I, I I wouldn't say I blame my mom, but I probably credit my mom. So one day I was just sitting complaining about all the problems we we're having in the RV industry. And my mom's just like, Paul, why don't you build your own instead of complaining and working on other people's problems? I'm like, wow, that's a phenomenal idea. Let me you, try. <laughs> you have a very smart mother. Yeah. And so I went to the local dealership. I'm like, hey, can I buy a couple of ProMaster vans? We started on the ProMaster chassis. And they're like, sure, we negotiated a good price. I picked up three of the vans, had no idea what I was doing, but I had a really good team. I had a strong team and I had a clear vision. I wanted to build the ultimate adventure van. So traditional RVs are more so designed for RV parks. I wanted to focus on another area of what we call the adventure area, where you can go to national parks and not be required to hook up to 30 amp or hook up to water and sewer. And so we designed our own plumbing system, designed our own electrical system, made the van Uh, for design. I used my, my wife for aspiration there, as you know, uh, we as men aren't always the most uh, inclined towards color matching. Your <laughs> other, your other smart decision. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, definitely very Pinterest inspired. We had white cabinets, white walls. Outside looks like it's an overlanding Jeep. On the inside, it was very luxury, and it was perfect. Like we listed it on Instagram and Facebook, and it just went viral. It seemed like everybody in the country wanted one. We did forty-eight units our first year. Uh, oh, super wow. successful year. That's fantastic. Well, you yeah. know, a lot of companies are jumping into it now, and even the ones who have produced a lot of Class Bs over the last five years, because there was, and you know from your own experience, there was a time when dealers didn't want to, cla- you know, carry Class Bs because they thought they were niche products. Well, yeah. they're not niche products anymore. When they started right. increasing, you know, twenty or twenty-five percent a year in sales, that's not a niche product. Right. And now many of those companies are looking at the market that you service. They're looking yeah. at the boondocking and because we understand that Gen Zs and, and millennials, they don't they don't want to sit around a campfire with a bunch of old people, you know, <laughs> with, a, with a Bud Light in their hand or something. So <laughs> they, they want to be outdoors. That's what's yeah. the growth of our business and people wanting to, you know, uh, my, my favorite line when I do seminars is nobody buys an RV, just have an, R, an RV. They buy yeah. it to do something with it. Yeah. So you're taking them that level, but you got a three year head start. Really, yes, sir. Because that's where you come out the gate on it. So who is your typical? Is is it possible to say you have a typical buyer? Yes, it is. It's um, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of folks going into retirement, but it's not your traditional retirees that are you know are sixty sixty five. Uh, the amazing thing is people are starting to retire at twenty seven. Can you believe that? Like 
our youngest client today is 27. She just she, she did some really smart investments in the uh let's in the tech world and just wants to go explore and travel and boondock. And so I would say the common the common thing is people either retiring or people able to work remote. So it's like a semi-retirement. Yeah, that and you're so right on that. And uh, it's it's a different breed, but that's helping our industry grow because we're broadening the demographic base. They may go for a regular traditional RV in later years when they stop exploring. Uh, yeah. Do you find your customers are all over the states or even perhaps overseas because these units can travel? Yeah, right now we are uh, in the U.S. Uh, based and uh, we're currently working channels and avenues to go international. We're working a couple of deals in Germany and Australia and working really hard to penetrate that international market. Interesting. Explain your uh, marketing philosophy in terms of your distribution from Factory Direct to where you are today. Yeah, Factory Direct was amazing because we were we had an intimate relationship with our clients. So we got a lot of firsthand feedback that made us even better and improved our design, which was already ahead of the industry. And so that was a really good experience for us. And I think any new company in the industry should definitely start with a Factory Direct to build that foundation. But then when you want to scale, um, it's almost impossible to build a factory and a dealership in one. It's very complex. And so that's where we made the transition to now our dealer distribution dealers. There's one of our dealers has been in the game uh, 50 plus years. And so he's got 50 years of industry knowledge, connections, resources, uh, and so forth. So that's helped us exponentially scale. But, and I would, I would guess that your dealers are the more forward thinking ones. I mean, oh, yeah. you don't go on to a traditional dealer that, that and they're all great. And yeah. We love them all. But yeah. if they're selling 10 different brands and fifth wheels and trailers and some motorhomes and some class B's and some pop-ups, that's probably not a good prospect. Somebody's got to have the vision of where are my future customers coming from? Yeah. And I think that's another area. So besides your mother and your wife, your thought process as far as who is actually going to buy the product and what dealers can sell it. Yeah, I have a really uh, strong asset within my company. I can't disclose his name <laughs> because it's a very <laughs> brutal industry out there. And so um, he has been just a life coach for me. Um, he's helped me through uh, many, many big decisions. And his experience uh, in the industry has been phenomenal for the reason of um, he's able to vet these dealers. So we have dealers from all over wanting to carry our product because our margins are phenomenal. Our relationship is not like a traditional RV dealer. Uh, RV manufacturer relationship, we call our dealers partners and we build strong relationships that go beyond the margins and the units. We build a personal relationship. And so, yes, we have a very strict netting, a vetting process that uh, qualifies the dealer, whether or not they're uh, able to carry our line. Okay. So our guest this morning is Pavel Bosovic, uh, your CEO and president of 27 North. Yes, sir. All right. So if people don't know anything, they look at this and they're saying, where has this company been? I don't know this guy. I don't know the product. How do people get in touch with you? So they can go on our website, uh, 27north.com. Um, I'm also a uh, personal page, Pavel Bostovic and company page, The 27 North. Um, you just put that into Google and you'll see newspaper articles. You'll see YouTube channels. We've done tiny home tours. We've done a lot with like influencers, Sam and Dan, uh, Jared uh, Tucci, uh, Hank. I'm sure you know Hank. Uh, Lala, not Lala, uh, Stranger Palooza. And yeah. so, yes, just type it into Google. We're on YouTube, Instagram and so forth. And yeah, the 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 and then that's for us in regards to product. We, when we started, we made a list of 12 items that we as an RV service center really struggled and faced with. One of the major ones is plumbing, cabinetry construction, wall covering, ceilings, uh, air conditioning, electrical. So we made a list of the 12 major bottleneck, pain points, frustrations we as an RV service center had. And that's how we designed our first unit is tackling each one of these points. And the end user loved it. And our clients to this day are still... You know, that's what really sets us apart and people find value in. Well, we'll we'll put all that information down below. We'll put 
some pictures and some videos from your website and you're on Facebook, you're, you're, you're everywhere. So yes, that, sir. that's all. If they go to the website, that's got all that information. Well, I really appreciate it. Uh, I've learned a lot uh, in talking to you this morning and uh, hopefully we'll be able to introduce that to a lot of people with the Camper Report show. And uh, I want to stay in touch with you and see how you keep going there. I appreciate it, Bob. I look forward to hosting you. We're actually groundbreaking on a new facility, so we'd be honored to um, have you come visit our factory and we'd give you a tour and show you what we're all about here at 27 I, North. I, I would be delighted. That's that's one of the other things that I enjoy in this industry is getting around and meeting the people and seeing the factories and seeing everything in action. Nothing, nothing beats right. that. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool. It has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. Hey everybody, we are in Elkhart, Indiana, and we are not just in Elkhart, we're at a very special place, we're at the Dynamax plant, and a very special person that we're talking to is Brian Clemens, and uh, Brian is about to uh, give us a little tour of this beautiful new paint job. I gotta, I gotta get a shot of this paint job. I don't know if you can tell, you almost have to have like three shades of day in order to see how cool it is. But Brian, uh, tell us about your latest creation here. Well, we've got... Uh, quite a bit of demand as people push away from generators. I know California has some things coming along, so we wanted to be ahead of the curve. We had already started doing lithium and made it standard on a lot of our vehicles, and our goal was then to create a single fuel and eliminate the generator altogether. So we did that last year with the 24FW, and uh, it's one of those things, it's, it's you have to take the sofa or the dinette, you don't get both. Oh. So this floor plan enabled us to give you both a sofa and a dinette by using the Murphy bed. And then to save weight, we went ahead and, and did the same single fuel. So it's a... Uh, yeah, describe this single fuel thing. Let's go in here because yeah. that wind is getting strong. So single fuel is the new buzzword, huh? Well, for us, I mean, it's not, yeah. it's sort of the segue or the stepping point to EV vehicles. Okay. Or EV, I should yeah. say. So what this enables to do is, is sort of walk before we run. Let's see what we can run off the battery power before we completely emanate everything. So what we do is we put a second alternator on the chassis. Uh, that alternator is going to be putting at highway speeds around 230, 240 amps into the batteries. Okay, and this this chassis is the, the Mercedes Sprinter. Mercedes Sprinter, that's correct. Probably known as the Cadillac of Class C's, would you say? Yeah, I, it's it's hard to find a vehicle that is as responsive, it's quiet, it's... it's um, very, um, the acceleration is good. It's a well-built uh, chassis with all of your creature comforts and controls within within reach. It's one and, of my favorite, uh, just from a standpoint, when you want to get up and go and get around or whatever, this thing will get in and out of, it drives literally like, yeah. a, like an Like a car, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exceptional fuel mile too, I know in mine. It's at least 15. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. get a good tailwind on I-90 today and yeah, uh, yeah. I could get home on one tank, well. That might be exaggerating. But it, it is very <laughs> fuel efficient for putting a home on the back of it, for yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the single fuel um, just allows us, you know, the goal was to make things simpler. And with every RV, you have to worry about, you know, solar and battery power and your, your water resources and your sewer resources. And we're just trying to take away another resource and not worry about. There's no maintenance on the generator now. You don't have to worry about oil changes and fuel filters and things for the generator. And we take away LP. So you're not worried about LP tank and finding that fuel. It's very yep. easy to find diesel. It's not always super easy to find LP. Propane, right. Yep. So we took that out of the equation. So now, again, you've got uh, roughly 600 amp hours of battery power. I think we just went just over that. Xantrex has been a really good partner for us on this. The first one that went out, like I told you, I was getting about 230 amps of battery, of, of amperage, charge into the batteries 
we brought it back to them and they said we can do better so they went back in and they tweaked some of the algorithms they tweaked some of the settings and now we're, we're pulling off of both alternators so most rvs will pull off of one alternator a little bit of reserve power we have a dedicated alternator and we're still pulling the reserve power so i think they got it up over 300 amps of charging power down the highway so to give you an example i took it out for a weekend the first prototype and i was there for three days in the cold I was running the heater non-stop, PVs, everything else. By that Sunday, I think, after three days, I was about 50% battery power, and within 90 minutes, I was back to 100%. Wow. I think they've got that down to under 60 minutes at half. To recycle that recycle To, to that using power. the second one, yeah. So okay. again, you don't have to worry about LP or the diesel um, generator or turning it on or whatever. You literally, as long as the inverter on, the entire vehicle's inverted, including the air conditioner. There's a load shed system in there, so if you do turn multiple things on that would overload the system or the inverter, it will shed those items and allow you to run uh, on a priority schedule that's okay. built in. So as far as sleeping accommodations are concerned, you've got at least room for six. Yeah, so we're seat belted for four. Okay. Um, theoretically, you can make the dinette down. Of course, yes. we've got the Murphy bed in the back that's integrated into the sofa, so the whole thing just folds down. Uh, and you get basically a queen size bed there. Uh, the dinette typically can be made into a bed. We're only seat belted for four though. Yeah. And then of course you've got the cab over bunk as well. Yeah. It, it, extremely spacious up here. Extremely spacious. And again, you got your your top quality Mercedes um, Sprinter front end dinette ample. It's not one of these kind that you have to squish into. Yeah. Uh, made for adults. It's, it's the exact same dinette that we run in our M2 series trucks. The big ones. Same width, yep. The big ones in your bathroom. Even your toilet has got a, a porcelain toilet with uh, water in it. It's not a gravity toilet, right? Correct. It's a, it's a macerating toilet. Yep. Uh, the tanks aren't directly underneath, so we have to, to pipe that over. Um, and it just makes it, you don't have to worry about sewer smells or anything like that because it works yep. just like a home toilet. Yeah. With a pee trap and a, and a, uh, and a water trap. And an ex ex exceptionally large shower for a uh, Class C. Absolutely. That uh, gives you that. You've got your vents, one here, one there. You've got your air. Uh, you got two good sized TVs. Looks yeah, like that might have been overkill because I think you can see them both in the same spot. Well, but you know what? You've got privacy curtain there, right? Yes, so right if there, you so can split up if you want the kids up front yeah. and the adults want to Just be in the back. Just have them yeah. turn their volume down. Yeah, absolutely. That's all. Absolutely. And then your standard uh, fridge. Um, but the other thing I've noticed is that this flooring. But Has anybody clamored for uh, uh, shag carpeting again? No, no. no I think uh, the shag carpeting days are done. And we are Leno throughout just about everywhere we can go. Uh, a, it's easy to clean, easy to repair. Uh, the other thing on the flooring is we're composite floor across all of our sprinters. We did that uh, about a year ago, and uh, we continue to do that. We continue to take out wood anywhere we can. And A, to save weight, and B, you know, moisture obviously gets onto wood. If there is anything where there's moisture, we just want to eliminate that opportunity and eliminate any negative effects of, of that. Mm. So uh, we're composite, like I said, floor. Uh, all of our walls, we've taken wood out of the exterior wall. There's no um, luau or anything like that, and it's, it's basically a composite exterior. Um, same thing on the roof. We've tried to take as much wood out as we can, okay, and see? we'll continue to do so. You have a handy ladder that is included for uh, getting up there, and uh, we should say that those, both the driver's seat and the passenger seat do swivel so that you can be part of the conversation. Absolutely, and that's what gives you... It's such a small footprint being 24, 25 feet on this one, but the fact that you can fill the driver passenger seat, sort of like class A, yep. gives you just more living space, more seating area. With that, when you have the sofa and the dinette for even more seating space, it just, it, it's something you can do a lot more time in, uh, something you could entertain in, and again, in a very, very small footprint. So Brian, the, the um, series number of this? This is the Isada 3 series. It's what we call the Freedom Edition. Uh, most people were familiar with the Explorer Edition we did in the 5 Series and then navigated, uh, we brought into the M2 trucks as well, which is basically enhanced solar and uh, lithium batteries and maybe more four season type construction. And then uh, we came out with the Freedom, Pack, Freedom Edition to basically do the same thing but in a Sprinter and again it eliminates the generator completely. Great, perfect. Hey, we want to thank you so much and let people know they'll be seeing this on the highways of America starting in about eight minutes.
when I traverse I-90 back to New England and then come back to Wisconsin and Michigan, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I'm going to ask you, remind me to get some brochures if you have some brochures, because I'm sure that people are going to, campgrounds, people are going to stop me. Absolutely. And they're going to say that. So you give me some brochures and we'll be ready to go. And uh, on behalf of my colleague, Bob Zagami, and everybody at the New England RV Dealers Association, this is Brian Clemens from Dynamax and John DePietro. Have a great day, everybody.